the way that we do this show, we you know, you you more than me because of your taste in wrestling and sort of how you were brought into the business, you you you're you're pretty critical uh, of Dynamite. Not that you're uh, an AEW hater or anything, but you know, you you're going to be critical and the way that I look at this show because we have to take this podcast seriously if we if we go over the idea of oh it's just wrestling it's not that important hmm. then who's going to listen to us talk about it right we have to look at it as something that's pretty important i want to make sure like when when i'm doing the show i'm actively making sure that i am being critical of things that i would be critical with when it comes to wwe and if we thought about, let's say WWE is in this same scenario, and they, they, I mean, they should be in the same scenario. They should be trying to find a champion for Raw because, you know, Roman Reigns has both belts and it's off TV. But let's say they did a version of whatever it is that they would do. I think what they would do is they would put a lot of upper mid carters in this tournament, and then they would put the one person they wanted to win, and they would just beat the mid carters and put the one person in and all of a sudden you're like oh why isn't um drew mcintyre in this tournament it's like oh because they didn't want to beat him why isn't um randy orton in this tournament oh it's because they don't want to beat him either mm -hmm. and that's essentially what tony khan did yes. on wednesday and so i want to make sure that i am using that analogy because that it would be the same critique I would have for this version of a WWE tournament because that's exactly what Vince McMahon would do. He would put in people that he could beat because he's got the one guy that he wants and he doesn't want to, he, you know, he doesn't want to beat a Chris Jericho. He doesn't want to beat a Hangman Page. He doesn't want to beat a Wardlow because those guys are going to be in big matches on the pay per view or whatever or in your storylines. And so I want to make sure that I'm clear on that. I didn't like this at all mm -hmm. and I would have hated it. If WWE did it too, so I mean, I, I, the 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 last thing I would say about this is, you know, it's it's so funny because everything is about expectations, right? Happiness, like our happiness with what we see uh, on wrestling or just in anything, in entertainment or life, it's a complete function of your expectations. And I think the problem that I had with Dynamite is I was like, okay. This is this is probably a moment that Tony Khan has booked in his head since he was a kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, let, let, we'll use your Sting analogy. Sting is supposed to face Ric Flair and win the title, and then he gets hurt, and you have to sort of think on the what's what what's the move? Oh, you know, they then they turn they turn Lex. And I I imagine that he has thought about this before. And my expectation for him was like, I was like, oh. It's time for him to get really creative. I want to see what he does. And I thought by him being overly creative, he was really just being safe. And he was also trying to please the, the TV rating because he wanted to get the, the open to the show with this semi-important. Well, at least we thought it was going to be important Battle Royal and it turned out to be not that important. Mm -hmm. And then the main event, which was the match the match with Moxley, and then ultimately who turned out to be Kyle O'Reilly. So I get it. Like That's the business. The TV ratings are the business. Your next TV deal is the most important thing in your company's, uh, you know, in, in their life, the, the life of the company. But I was really disappointed in how he did it, and I, I have to call that out. Like, by not wanting to beat certain guys... Essentially, you made the interim title not a big deal. And for John Moxley to be in the mix for this thing after he carried the company through the pandemic or was one of the guys who carried the company through the pandemic, ultimately is one of the main reasons why you even have this idea for Forbidden Door because he's so adamant that he wants to work New Japan as well. And it's just kind of like, wow, you know, it let, let's heat this thing up by not he really heating it up. And I, I will say I, I was really, really disappointed with how they did the whole show. Now, again, watching it a day later, I had, you know, I had these thoughts and I was like, OK, I can sort of look at this, you know, Monday morning quarterback this a little bit more. And I really do think it was just sort of scared booking in a sense. 
Um, and, you know, not wanting to ruin things that you've already sort of cemented or maybe have in pen mm -hmm. when this should be the most important thing, not what's happening in three weeks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I was booking and something will happen and to me, something always good came out of it. You know, I just, it just got my mind going even clearer, I think, because sometimes like, OK, what do you need to do? OK, how we get out of the situation? But it just I always felt like it just worked out for the better. Like just when I when I was doing premiere, I mean, my favorite, first champions will be Timmy Thatcher mm -hmm. and on the first show and he's going to win the tournament. And I was going to build the promotion around him as like this, you know, Jack Briscoe type world champion. And, you know, Jeff Cobb was going to chase him and they're, you know, Jeff Cobb was finally going to beat him. But here comes the night before the show. Timothy Thatcher calls me up and says he hurt his back. He can't work. Yikes. And so what's the guy to do? Right. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to have Cobb win. And he was actually, he wasn't even in a tournament at the time. What year is this, by the way, just so people understand the time frame? This is 2000 and, um, 2013. So like nine years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very long time ago now, but, um, you know, very young Jeff Cobb and, um, you know, Timmy Thatcher is just about to get, you know, more and more out of the West coast and work all over. Um, and so I had to get, you know, what I do. So I called Jared Kratos up. He was available and he filled the spot and, the one guy I said could never win the belt, had to win the belt, was that was Dave Tutra because he's a really good friend of mine. And um, but always the friends of the Booker to get yeah. that title. Well, I need, I needed, I needed, I need. I was decided to go with Jeff Cobb on the next show, right? So I had Jeff Cobb win on this show, and then just Jeff Cobb won the title from Dave quickly on the next show, and then Jeff Cobb became like I decided to go with. Jeff Cobb as my guy, which I was going to do in the future, but I just accelerated it and it worked out for the better in my opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. And then so, um, so yeah, so you just gotta, to me, I just always, when shit, when, it, when someone couldn't show up or <laughs> whatever, it's just something positive came out, but you got really got to take a deep breath, not rush to make a quick decision. Like, you know, like that. I think he probably should have, I think he was, he's just overbooked. He's overbooked, got, you know, like you said, probably didn't want to ruin what he had going on with other stuff, but all that stuff could still happen. Yeah. You just, you know, focus on the title in this one show or maybe a, a, two shows. And, you know, the whole Battle Royal thing, I mean, it was one, it was a bad Battle Royal, like really poorly worked. You know, typical shit we see nowadays, just, you know, guys hugging the ropes while couple guys do a spot and they just keep switching and keep switching and um you know i was and kyle riley winning like i love kyle riley i really like his work yeah but at the same time it's like when he won did you really think he's going to be facing tanahashi at the forbidden door no way no you way. know so the crowd though they liked the match you could tell they just liked the match but they never thought that kyle riley would ever beat john moxley in the main event so I kind of would have went with Darby Allen of all the list of guys in that group, you know. I thought maybe because Darby Allen has the the equity of the fans as a top star, you could have gone with Kingston. I not Kingston, but Lee Kingston. I would hold back on him because I think that's a special story. Yeah, of him chasing the title with the right heel and everything. I just think you, you would, I would hold off on him. I wouldn't. I would never do Kingston at this with this kind of situation. But something in the future with the heel. You know, like a, a cocky, arrogant heel. You know, Chris Jericho would have been perfect in Kingston. You know, I mean, that was the mm -hmm. case back when they started something like that. Um, but yeah, I, um, you know, a lot of the guys like Tony Nese was in this. Who cares? You know, yeah, the the it's Ass Boys. When, ass, when the Ass Boys are in this match, I was just like, oh man, <laughs> what are we doing? John Silver. I know he's popular fans, but he's you know he's even Wheeler Yuta, which they really. They really said that they want to tell the story of like Wheeler. It came out Wheeler and Kyle Kyle Riley. He's like, oh, what if the black the Blackpool Combat Club members face each other for the title? What, you know? Wow. And, and the fans were behind Yuta, but I'm watching Yuta out there. He just has zero charisma. Gee, he executes moves really well, 
but just 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 nothing there. I don't I don't see that fire. I don't see top star of the guy. And um that kind of really stood out to me when I was watching this little but the fans, of course, the fans, they you know, they love they love him and their stuff, but yeah, just like going forward, you know, for the future. I just don't I just don't see him taking that taking that mental top guy. I hope I'm wrong though. All right. Again, I'll repeat what I said earlier. Happiness is a function of expectations. If you give me Kyle O'Reilly and John Moxley as a main event uh, on Dynamite, I'm like, that's oh, gonna be really fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be really good. If you give me Kyle O'Reilly and John Moxley for the chance at the interim championship, my immediate thought is, mm-hmm. uh, Kyle O'Reilly is not really deserving yet. W- where where's this coming from? 